You have to avoid these two banks closing credit card accounts. You want to avoid that heart dropping moment when you log in and see available credit zero dollars and then you realize your account was closed without warning leaving you speechless. Now two banks really stand out above the rest when it comes to account closures. The first bank is Capital One and after looking at over 30 cases in the past year I found the only true reason why they will close your account and I found the bank that everybody hates who's five times smaller than Capital One but shuts down twice as many accounts. Often they even close multiple accounts at the same time, wiping out 50 plus thousand dollars of credit in seconds. It's insane. A lot of people don't know that all banks have the authority to close your credit card account at any time. They just have to give you written notice with a reason. And from my experience, that reason does not have to be accurate. Now on a large scale, banks tend to ramp up account shutdowns for three main reasons. First is economic recessions. Now think about it, when the economy is down, people often lose jobs or make less money. This makes it tougher for folks to keep up with their debts, including credit card bills. In fact, credit card debt jumped by a whopping $50 billion in late 2023. That's a 5% increase. And the average credit card balance, it hit $6,500. That's a 10% jump from the year before. Plus credit card delinquencies are at a 12 year high right now. And we're talking about an average of 3.1%. And number two, there's interest rate hikes. When interest rates climb up, the cost of borrowing on your credit cards also goes up. That means people already struggling with credit card debt find it even harder to manage. As a result, you see more credit card accounts getting shut down. And get this, the average credit card interest rate in the US is now an eye-watering 24.6%. That's the highest it's been since 2019. And number three, there's tighter credit rules, or what I like to call lending appetite. Now here's the deal, with the economy being shaky and interest rates on the rise, credit card companies are getting more cautious. They start tightening up their lending rules, which can lead to them closing more accounts, especially for folks with lower credit scores or who they see as risky. During this big survey by the Federal Reserve back in January, they mentioned that banks are planning to be even more strict with lending this year. So let's say that you used to be okay with a 650 credit score, but now banks might be like, nah, nah, you're not worth it. Basically, they might not see you as a profitable enough customer to keep you around. That's why I always recommend banking with many different companies from small credit unions that are local to you and online fintechs like SoFi. SoFi is awesome because they guarantee that you won't receive a hard credit pull if you get denied. So you'll never be left empty handed because when you apply for the SoFi credit card, there's no chance of a negative impact if you don't get approved. Plus it comes with a $50 sign up bonus, 3% cash back on travel through SoFi, 2% back elsewhere, $1,000 worth of cell phone protection, and there's no annual fees or foreign fees. Plus a year ago, they opened up the car so you can use it with any bank that you want and you can just redeem your rewards for full value as a statement credit. I've been using the SoFi credit card for over four years now and they gave me a $10,000 starting limit. So definitely hit the link below to apply with no chance of a hard pull if you get denied and you can get that $50 sign up bonus too. So I found that out of the top national banks, Capital One closes the most accounts and people won't stop trashing them for it. The third most likely reason why Capital One will close your account is due to high usage. It represents 10% of all the cases and high usage means you're using over 30% of your credit limit and letting that 30% report to the credit bureaus. And check this out. One person said Capital One closed both my venture card and Quicksilver card with balances of $28,000 and $14,000 respectively. And here's the situation. Some things I've been on the waiting list for since 2022 finally came through. It was two watches and I also booked a vacation. I charged my two watches on my Quicksilver card, which came to $28,000 and my vacation was $13,800, which I charged to the Venture card for travel points. My point in doing this was to get the points and the cash back for each card. The same day they closed my accounts, I paid off both accounts in full. Now, just think about this from Capital One's point of view. They're seeing this huge wave of new purchases coming in and it's happening on not just one, but multiple cards. And it's not just a little spending here and there, we're talking numbers that are likely skating super close to the max credit limits. If you're Capital One, that person looks like a huge risk, right? 
And next, 20% of account closures were caused by fraud. This is when someone uses your credit card or card details to make purchases without your permission. But there's even more to it. Even if it's you using your card, certain things can seem fishy to your bank, like suddenly buying a whole bunch of stuff really fast or making purchases in another country. These kinds of activities can set off alarm bells for fraud, even if it's all legit on your end. And here's a data point. They said, so I've had this account for about eight years and I've just been using this account to pay a subscription every month and paying it every due date. I also added two of my cousins as authorized users about two months ago. I've made 100% payments and have three other accounts with them. So today I called to find out why it was closed and talk to three different people and no one can give me a valid reason on why it was closed. They just keep stating what the letter says and said that it's all they know and that I need to go look at my agreement. And you know what? Here's what the agreement said. It said, we're closing this account because activity on this or another account is not consistent with our expectations for account usage and violates the Capital One customer service agreement. I wanna let you guys know, if you're ever in doubt, about what happened and why your account was closed, always look for what changed about your situation first. This person added two of their cousins as authorized users a couple of months prior. The way I see it, either the authorized users were seen as an invalid action from the start or they're directly responsible for the fraudulent activity. This is why you should never give your authorized user access to the physical credit card. Just add them to your account so that they can get full credit and get a score boost and keep their physical card in the sock drawer and don't let anyone use it. And the number one reason responsible for 70% of account closures is returned payments. A return payment on your credit card is basically when your payment bounces back. It's like you tried to pay your bill, but there wasn't enough cash in your bank account or something was off with your payment method. Here's what one cardholder said. They said, this weekend, I came to find out my Capital One Venture One card had been closed due to return payments. This situation was an unfortunate mix-up where funds had not been transferred from my business account to savings on two separate occasions in a small window. I have a pretty hefty debt of $9,300 to pay back on this card, and I like to maintain the line of credit. And listen, that's sad. Capital One is so sensitive to return payments that I've seen them close the account of someone who only had one return payment. There's really no margin for error here. Also, this person seems to have high usage because the way they describe the balance as hefty. I'd say the large balance was a contributing factor to the account shutdown. And another person said, so a while back, Capital One closed my account. I had never had a late payment and everything was going great until one day my bank account got hacked but I had already made my monthly payment, so my payment bounced. Now, I'm super skeptical about this story. For the payment to bounce due to the account being hacked, the hack would have needed to happen in the narrow window between when the payment was initiated from their bank account and then when the funds were actually transferred to Capital One. Now, that sucks if it happened, but it feels like they just didn't have the money to pay. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And the next person said, I had a Capital One account that got Insta closed because of two return payments. My bank account wouldn't let me send the money over, so I tried the next day and it worked. As soon as it got posted, I got a fraud alert in the Capital One app and called. They said my account was closed and they can't do anything about it. I never missed a single payment. My credit score went from 690 to 558 in literal minutes. Everybody, two return payments is too, too many. No bank wants to deal with return payments at all. They are red flags for financial instability and no one wants to provide unsecured credit to someone who can't make payments. If your account was closed and you don't want to do business with Capital One anymore, I don't blame you. To find out what other options you do have, you can see every credit card you're pre-approved for with just a soft credit pull by hitting the link below. I have a master list with over 60 cards and it keeps growing by the month. So check it out. Now, moving on, Synchrony Bank is by far the worst. I mean the worst when it comes to credit card account shutdowns. It's so bad that they're responsible for 22 out of the 34 cases I reviewed. What makes it worse is they're five times smaller than Capital One. I feel confident in saying that closing accounts is part of Synchrony's business model. They just do it so much. You're gonna recognize their third most reason for closing accounts. It's returned payments, and that represents 20% of your account closures. One Synchrony customer said, 
Synchrony Bank closed my account due to an old checking account linked to AutoPay. Even though I made large payments both months, they tried to withdraw from the old account. Now, there's a huge difference between starting a payment and completing a payment. This person never actually made the payment. They just initiated one, but it never went through. You always got to follow through and check back to make sure your payments get it completed. And the second most likely reason for account closure is too much credit exposure for the bank. I found it's the reason for 24% of the cases I reviewed. Now, Synchrony didn't outright give the reason, but from my experience, seeing all the details I'm about to show you, I say too much credit exposure is the cause. Banks don't like putting too many eggs in one basket with just one person. This is like when a bank has given a whole lot of credit to a single person. Imagine you've got several credit cards or loans and they're all from the same bank. That bank starts getting a bit nervous because they put a lot of trust and money into you. If you default on all your credit cards with them, they might not see the money again. It's risky for them and they usually try to avoid it. So here's why I think excessive credit exposure is the reason. Listen to this one person. So there is a serious problem with Synchrony Bank. My credit score is 750. I've been using Synchrony cards daily since 2016, always paying the full balance each month. I've never been late on a payment, whether it's with Synchrony or any other bank cards. I always pay on time. My credit report is spotless with only 8% utilization, and I pay off these balances in full every single month. Two days ago, I woke up with a bunch of emails. Synchrony closed all my accounts for nothing. I called customer service and they were even confused about what happened. I had an Amazon store card. It had $590 balance on it with a $20,000 limit. I had a PayPal MasterCard with a $350 balance on it with a $20,000 limit. I had an eBay MasterCard with a $1.87 balance with a $10,000 limit a Synchrony Car Care card with a $1,400 balance and a $10,000 limit, an Adorama card with no balance on it with a $3,500 limit, a PayPal credit line with a $950 balance and a $5,000 limit, and I had a Sweetwater card with a $1,200 balance and a $6,000 limit. Ironically, this card was approved just two days before Synchrony closed all of my accounts. This is why I say your credit score is very important most of the time, but depending on your overall credit profile and the bank's sensitivities to certain data points and their appetite for lending at the time, your credit score could end up becoming almost useless. And I've been noticing a pattern with Synchrony. People with awesome credit scores and solid payment histories are suddenly having their accounts closed. And here's the common thread. Each one of them had five or more credit card accounts with Synchrony. That makes me think Either Synchrony has an internal credit exposure limit or limit on how many accounts you can hold with them at any one time. This makes sense because many banks like Chase and Amex have well-known limits on both of these things. The problem is there seems to be no internal system stopping you from going past these invisible limits they set for you. Synchrony lets you hit the wall and crash out and they shut you down. This should not be happening. And things are made even worse when you consider that Synchrony does everything it can to give you as much credit as possible. They let you get pre-approved for all their cards and they hand out huge limit increases like candy, which leads to you getting your account closed even faster. I suggest limiting your exposure to Synchrony as much as possible. If you already have a ton of credit with Synchrony, consider yourself warned. Next, the number one reason Synchrony will close your account is high usage. 52% of accounts were closed because of this. And one person said, we purchased the house last year and bought all new stuff inside our home. Shortly after we made all the purchases for our home, they closed accounts citing high risk. Of course, I've continued paying the cars on time, most of the time at 0%. So I just make the payment required and we'll have it all paid off before the 0% promo ends. And another person said, Synchrony Bank closed my $7,000 line today. For the last couple of months, about three, I've been running pretty high balances on all credit cards. I've made some stupid purchases and been helping out my family with bills also, which has amounted to quite a bit. And starting Friday, I'll be paying down the $14,000 aggressively. And another customer said, Synchrony Bank closed my crate and barrel store card without a warning a couple days ago. They gave no reason. I've been furnishing my home with a lot of crate and barrel furniture and have been issued $1,300 in reward certificates with an additional $600 pending. You know, these data points really say it all. 
Synchrony is incredibly sensitive to high usage, even when you're obviously carrying a balance to take advantage of a 0% interest promotion. And I suggest when using Synchrony cards, it's wise to avoid having high usage on more than one card at a time. Try not to keep a high balance on any Synchrony card for more than a few months also. And it's important to be aware that any sudden increase in your account balance, especially if it's out of the ordinary compared to your previous spending habits, will likely draw extra attention from the bank. This means if you suddenly start spending a lot more than usual in a short period of time, Synchrony is gonna take a closer look at your accounts and they might put you on the chopping block too. So what can you do if they close your account and reduce your credit limits? I've seen evidence that you can request a credit limit increase if you correct their problem quickly so that they can restore your original limit. But listen, after looking at all the data points, I can tell you that nobody has been successful in getting their account reopened immediately after it's been closed. But here's what you can do. Wait about 60 to 90 days and use each bank's pre-approval tool to see what they offer you. Pre-approvals tend to be about 90% accurate, so you can feel a lot more confident before you take a chance and apply again. I've seen cases where someone had their Synchrony accounts closed and then reopened a few of them as soon as a few months later. And just to drive that point home, one person said, after they closed my revolving lines over $100,000, I vowed to never do anything with Synchrony again. Until two years later, so it took me two years, but now I have a Venmo credit card at $20,000, PayPal at $20,000, Sam's Club at $20,000, and a Cathay card at $6,000. You know, I'm not surprised they were able to get reapproved for so many Synchrony cards. They're known for giving out easy approvals. There's actually four credit card companies that are well known for giving just about everybody a chance and even a second chance. There was one person who had a recent bankruptcy and a FICO score of 590 and still got approved for credit. Definitely check out the next video so you can see the four credit card companies I'm talking about. And thank you for watching.